Close. Oops. Time flies. Go back. Go back. Got it. Okay. Go back. All right. There we go. Okay. This is Google Docs and the new Smart Chips features. So uh, if that's where you wanted to be, then you're in the right spot. Way to go. Um, if it's not where you wanted to be, that's totally fine. No hard feelings here. Please, um, please feel free to check out at any time. So a little bit different. Normally I give, if you've been with me before, normally I give you all um, a document that, uh, or sorry, norm, excuse me. Normally I give you all a slide deck, um, but this time it's a little bit different. This, I actually don't have hardly any slides. There's, let me see, there's like, a, there's 14 slides. It's not even, it's not that many for, for us. Um, so what I've got though today is a handout. So that's what Allison's putting in the chat is a handout. So get a copy of that handout that has actually all the information in it and you can take it with you and it's yours forever. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Please make sure you sign in. Uh, you only just sign in once. If you've already signed in for the day, you are good to go. There's no, there's no need to sign in again. You only sign in once. Um, but if you haven't yet, please sign in. We want to know that you're here. All right, let me introduce myself. My name is Jessica Peterson. And if you've been with my sessions before, this slide looks a little different than it used to. Um, I, as of about a week ago, I have transitioned to the libraries team. I'm a learning design specialist and libraries is part of curriculum instruction called CNI here at SFUSD. Uh, before this, before this new change, I previously worked in department technology for four years as the district's primary Google trainer. So that's why I'm running this session now. Um, but I am actually, uh, I'm, I'm excited for a new thing, but it's also bittersweet to leave, right? So um, it's kind of do things, but you also miss all the other people that you're working with before. But the good news is I'm still in the district. You will still see me around, um, but I am, I'm no longer in DOT. So just a little bit of an update. Oh, actually, sorry, I'll go back. Allison, you're my moderator. Would you like to unmute and introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody. Good to see so many folks here for Jessica's session. She is in Incredible at sharing her knowledge, you will learn so much. Um, I've worked with Jessica in DOT before, and now I'm in the superintendent's office, and I do this now for fun. <laughs> yeah, I basically, I was like, Allison, I really need a moderator. Are you free? And she she happily agreed. She's so nice. So um, there's information here about getting paid. Um, it's already it's already been covered in a few other places, it's also on the website. So I'm not going to go through it all, but if you need information on how to get paid, um, it is here. You can find it on the website at sfusd.edu slash ddd, and Allison put that in the chat. Uh, I do have another announcement. Get excited for Meet. The district is um, is moving to Google Meet as our main video meeting platform. You will still see Zooms, like we are currently in a Zoom, right? You'll still see Zooms, um, but the we the district bought licenses um, over the summer for all SFUSD staff. And so we've got all sorts of really incredible meet features, um, breakout rooms, polls, uh, live stream webinars, co-hosts, um, slides and meet talk together. They, they're best friends. They work together really well. Um, and actually just before this, I did a session all about meet. So feel free to watch the recording if you weren't there. Uh, but meet is a really, really exciting tool and it's really great for screen recording. All right, here are our norms. Uh, our first norm is to please go ahead and type questions into the chat. Allison is my moderator. Her sole job today is to watch that chat and answer. She'll be able to answer all your questions, I'm pretty sure, because she knows just as much about Google Docs as I do. But in case she gets stumped, she will um, in interrupt me and ask the question. Or if she sees a question that she feels like everybody should answer or should hear the answer to, then she will, um, she'll also unmute and she'll ask, um, she'll interrupt me to ask that. Uh, we do ask that when you put your questions in the chat, go ahead and put them in for everyone so that everybody can see your question. A lot of times we get the same question over and over again. And so if you just send it to Allison or you just send it to me, um, nobody else gets to see that they, you know, that somebody else has that question. So go ahead and put it, you know, make sure that blue um, thing in the chat says everyone so that um, everyone in the meeting, I guess, so that um, you can, uh, everybody can see your question. So, but go ahead and put those questions right into the chat. Everyone is not an option. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. That makes a lot of sense now. I can fix that. There we go. And now it is. <laughs> Easy click of a button. Um, so yeah, please, uh, now you can chat to everyone. Please go ahead and um, select it as everyone. Thanks for, thanks for those of you who let me know that. My second norm is to go ahead and stay muted today so that others can hear. Uh, with we've all been in a lot of virtual meetings over the time or the past few years, and it can be really hard to hear someone who's talking if somebody else has a siren or a barking dog in the background. So go ahead and stay muted so it's a nice quiet space for everybody. 
And then my last norm is my very favorite norm. Um, if you've been with me before, it's, a, it's an old familiar. I do it all the time. And that is take what you can today and come back for more later. Google Docs is, um, I, I really like the Google tools because they're really simple to get up and going. And then the longer you work with them, the more there is to learn. So they're not hard to start as a very beginner, but they also, um, that there's so many other deeper things you can do. And so today is a little bit like a deeper topic. Um, I'm not going to talk about how you change font in Google Docs. I'm not going to talk about some of those things. Um, we're going to talk about smart chips specifically. But um, take what you can today. Come back for more later. This deck exists. There's lots of information you're receiving today. Lots of new ideas you're receiving today. Don't feel like you have to be a pro at Google Docs smart chips by the end of the session today. If you walk away with one new thing, it's a success. Okay? So take what you can today. Come back for more later. This is our equity frame um, that the Department of Technology uses. You've, you actually saw it earlier today in the keynote. And I always feel like um, sometimes it's hard to see like the connection between like Google Docs and equity. Like why does Google Docs matter for equity? Why does it matter how I format something for equity? Um, and I think about there, you know, there's a lot of documents in this world that have really important information that are not very easy to read. You know, you think of like the Panama, Panama Papers or like the Mueller Report or like, especially like political documents, a lot of times there's really important stuff in there and somebody just has to sit down and read it even though it's dry and hard and difficult to, to look through. Um, when it comes to the stuff that we make, whether you're making something for families, for students, for staff, for leaders, for community partners, when you're creating a resource using Google Docs for someone, um, even if it's like an agenda for a team meeting, you have a lot of opportunities to make that formatted as best as possible so that whoever looks at it, whether it's family members, whether it's leaders in the community, whether it's teachers, um, whether it's, you know, paraeducators, if it's um, other people that are in the same group as you working on a project, the easier you can make that information to find and the easier you can make it to be understood, the better off that, that whole thing is going to be. So, um, that's kind of how I see equity fitting in is that all these smart chips features is um, all these smart chips features help with making it so that a document can be exactly what you need it to be to meet the needs of the group that you're working with. So we're going to jump in with a warm opener. Allison's been putting it in the chat. I'm sure she's going to put it in the chat again right now. Um, I want you to take two minutes today to fill out today's warm opener. Um, and so I'm asking, um, I have six questions on there. Um, I'm asking, what do you do for the district? I'm asking if you're site-based or central office-based, and I'm curious about your confidence and experience with docs there. Allison put it in the chat, so go ahead and fill that out right now. The last three questions are optional. Um, I am looking, I'm looking for food recommendations if you have them, um, but if you don't have them, it's okay to skip them. Um, so yeah, go ahead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna stop talking for two whole minutes and uh, let you fill that out. Allison, put the link in the chat if you're looking for it. It's in the chat. If you're asking for the slide deck, um, the slide deck actually doesn't have any useful information for you in it, I promise. I know, uh, I know that we're used to getting decks, but the handout is really what you want. I, I promise the handout has everything you need in it. So... Um, yeah, you're currently doing the warm opener and then you can open the handout. Okay. One more minute to fill out that, that warm opener. Okay, go ahead and finish up the warm opener. Again, those last three questions are optional. Um, you can answer one, two, three, or none of them. That's fine. All right, let's look at the warm answer, or the warm, <laughs> the warm answer, the warm opener um, uh, responses. Sophia, it is in the chat. Allison, can you put in the chat again? Yeah. 
Um, so I, my first question was in seven or fewer words, what do you do for the district? Cause I was just really curious kind of like who we have in the room, but I know that like titles don't always say anything. So, um, I was just really curious, you know, like what people do. And so I've, so you've got teachers, we've got paraeducators, librarians, um, clerks, 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 resource specialists. Um, you inspire kids to be their best selves. That's, that's really lovely. I love that. Um, somebody's on the induction team. We've got, uh, oh. Um, oh, I see every time somebody asks me new, it's, it's resetting. That's, that's clever, but also challenging. Um, kindergarten teachers, substitute teachers, families events, S10 paras, school social workers, biology teachers, elementary teachers, kindergarten, we're all over the board. This is great. Um, this session will work for everybody. So uh, I see substitutes. I see lots of, lots of different groups in here. Some leaders, district leaders, coaches, all sorts of stuff. Great. I'm so glad. Okay. Um, I was curious if people were central office or site-based or both. Um, and it looks like we are pretty heavily site-based. That's great. That's awesome. Getting to work with, uh, directly with kids, hopefully all the time. Um, and we do have a, a small segment that are central office only. And then, a, uh, we got a handful of people who are both and I, um, both is a tough job. You high five way to go. That's a, that's a tough one to switch between the two. I was curious about confidence and experience with Google docs. And so I asked on a one to five scale, how, how confident, how experienced do you feel like you are? Um, and this is, this is actually a little bit higher than what I expected. Usually when I do these, I tend to see a lot of threes. Threes is usually the biggest peak. Um, I'm excited that four is like a slightly bigger peak, uh, but don't worry, no matter where you are, if you are a one, there are things in here for you. You will learn things. Um, if you are a five, there are things in here for you. You will learn things. Remember that norm that we had, take what you can today and come back for more later. Again, if you get one new thing, it's a success. So you will get things. No matter where you are on this scale, you will get things. And then I've got some optional questions. Um, I was curious, what's the best place to get tacos in the Bay Area, um, the name and the city where it is? And I see that somebody, two people said La Taqueria. And so it, it now it gave me this bar graph, but I've got La Tapatia, La Corneta, I don't know, Gracias Madres, El Castillito, Oscars. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be looking through all of these. Oh, El Gordo in Las Vegas, Tacos El Gordo in Las Vegas. All right, so many in SF. Yeah, if you got a taco recommendation, I wanna hear it. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm definitely gonna go through all of these later. La Corneta, Ferrolitos. All right, thank you. Um, I was curious about the best place to get dim sum in the Bay Area. Um, I love dim sum. It's a, I might have a, I might have a problem, a dim sum problem. Um, so we've got so many. Oh, great, this is awesome. Dumpling Home, Yangtzeng, Bao, Chinatown. Dum Sing King. Oh, these are great. Three star. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, I just made my new list of where I'm going to go for dinner. Awesome. Thank you. And then the best place to get pizza. Um, it looks like we have two votes for Tony's. Tony's is I, um, I worked with cohort two schools, which are in like the Tony's like North Beach is part of cohort two. And I would just like swing by Tony's for lunch. I was like, it's, it's in the, I'm, I'm right here. Serrano's, Fiorella. Um, Bonds on Ocean, Gaspares, Capos. These are dang fine. I love it. Um, I'm so excited to try all these. Arismendi. They have an air. I live in um, Oakland and they have an Arismendi in Emeryville. Um, and we can actually walk to it. I'm, I'm spoiled by having Arismendi so close. Um, this is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing these. I'm really excited. I've, I'm going to go home with and be like, look, look um, to my partner. Be like, look, look, I've got all these new, new places where we're going to, we're going to be eating. Thank you so much for sharing. So I'm gonna go back and talk about our agenda for today. Um, we just finished up opening moves. We're gonna talk about what are smart chips. Um, they're inside Google Docs and that's about all you have to know so far. Um, they're actually in lots of other places too, but we're gonna talk about the Docs ones today. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick um, orientation to the handout because the handout is got, it's got all the stuff. There's no deck link today because the handout is where all the things are. And in fact, I'm gonna be in the handout showing you things. So the deck is, is the deck is pretty much useless for you, um, but the handout is what you want. We're gonna talk about um, building blocks. That's a type of smart chips. We're gonna talk about variables. That's another type of smart chips. And then we're gonna talk about quick insert items, which is another type of smart chips. There's three kinds of smart chips, building blocks, variables, and quick insert items. And then we'll wrap up with some closing moves. Pretty sweet. All right. Oh, ha, look at that. I said the thing right before the side, side I had. There's three kinds of smart chips. We have variables, building blocks, and quick insert items. Variables are how you connect data. And I know that sounds really vague. Um, if you're like, oh, I connect data, like what does that mean? Um, I promise it'll make more sense. Building blocks are kind of like templates. Building blocks are my very favorite. 
Um, and then quick insert items are how you can like, instead of going up and clicking insert and like scrolling down to find the thing, you can actually do it from your keyboard now. It's, it's incredible. So quick insert items um, are items from the insert menu. So let's jump into the handout. Um, Allison's been putting the handout into the, into the chat. When you open the handout, it looks like this. And then there's this button up here that says use template. Go ahead and click use template. That's what I want you. I want you to click use template. And then this is your very own copy. You can type anything you want in there. Um, you can, you know, make changes. You can delete stuff. You can make, put notes in there to yourself. You can put comments, all that kind of stuff. It is your document. Um, so this is, so I want you to click use template. So I'm gonna click use template and it's making me a copy. Great. Here is my copy. Um, a quick orientation to this handout. This is built in Google Docs pageless mode. If you didn't know, um, Google Docs now has pageless mode. It came out, I want to say in like March, February, March. It hasn't been out very long. So if you didn't know, you're not behind, I promise. Um, but now you can, you can make Google documents that aren't limited to printing size pages, which makes a lot of sense, right? We very rarely do the things I make in Docs need to be printed. Um, I know that's maybe not true. Like if you work at a site, you might print out worksheets for kids or things like that. That makes sense, right? But like a lot of times we do make stuff that is never going to come off a printer. And so I do um, I do a lot of uh, stuff actually now in pageless mode. And pageless mode comes with some cool features like the ability to collapse headings. So um, my very first orientation here, it says click the, I guess that's the, but this is the test. This is, that's the, greater than symbol to the left of the headings to expand them. Um, so like down here, like email draft, if I click on that, it now email draft shows, I can click on it again and now it tucks it away. Um, same thing with this big building blocks, I can tuck all of these away. So it's really, um, it's really sweet and slick and nice um, to be able to like tuck things away. Um, and I've got a link right here, which is in your copy as well for, um, to learn more about those collapsible headings. Jessica, uh, could you pause for one second? Yes. yes. Okay. Hang on. I just want to double check and make sure I have everybody ready. Give me one moment, everyone. Thank you. We are pausing for um, interpreter needs in case you're curious. Jessica, I think I'm going to need you to make the interpreter co-host if you haven't already. I will do that. There's going to be another interpreter joining me, my partner, in a little bit. She just has to make her way over here. Okay. Right. I haven't found her in the participant list yet also. Not yet. Um, and... Oh, Christina's the host. She'll have to make people, she'll have to do the interpreter. I'm just a co-host. So Christina Wang, can you um, add Warren, the interpreter, yes, as a co-host? Thank you. Thank you everyone for your patience. We want to make sure the session is accessible to all. This is a great time to play with the headings though, if you want. Warren, you should be co-host now. Great, I'm just waiting for the client and the other interpreter to join the session. They're not here yet. Christina, um, do you have the names of the people that also need to be made co-host when they come in? I'll get that ready. Okay. Um, and I think that since this session is being recorded, I think 
Warren, do you think it's okay if we proceed with the session? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think if you are you able to turn on captioning, I think captioning that is turned on manually by the individuals. Um, so when the participant comes in. Great. Why don't you um why don't you go ahead and we'll try to work things out on our end? Yeah. Let me know if I need to pause again. It's yeah, and Warren, feel free to message me directly in the chat. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks everyone for your patience. So uh, we were doing a quick orientation to the handout. Allison put it in the chat again if you don't have it yet. Um, this document uses pageless format and you can collapse and expand the, the headings. Um, you can also zoom in or out. So you can change how wide the page is, is what I mean. I apologize. So under view and mode, or sorry, no, text width, view, text width. I like wide. That's my preference. Um, some people use full. Narrow makes it pretty skinny, but you can change like, basically it's like changing the margins, essentially how it displays for you. So um, that's just a little bit, that's just a little bit of information about this handout. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this top part. Okay. We're going to talk about building blocks first. Remember that building blocks are like templates and your own copy of your handout is where you can write your own notes and your own things in. So type all over that because that's yours. So um, the first building block I want to talk about is called the email draft. And so if you type at email, so at my at sign and I type email, you can see it's suggested email draft. And when I choose it, it pops up this building block. Um, this building block is really awesome. I love this so much because I can put, um, you know, Allison in here and maybe I'm going to CC um, my colleague, Christina. Great. I can say a subject that this is um, information about, Amen. actually, I'm going to change. I'm going to say um, upcoming meeting agenda. Okay. That's my subject line. And then I can put my email message here. So I can say, hi, Allison, we have our agenda ready. Right. Great. Whatever I want to say. Okay. And then the coolest part about this, the very coolest part is this is a button. This, this, this Gmail icon is a button. And if I click it, it will take what I've put here and it makes an email. So like it'll, they'll open up a new tab. Gmail will be there and it will, it will have like all the things I put in. It'll have the two to Allison, the CC to Christina, I'll have my subject, my stuff in there. It will put it in an email and I just have to click send. Um, it's so slick and smooth. And what I love about this is that it makes it a lot easier to collaborate on an email. So if you are maybe working with somebody else on how you want to word an email to um, something, or if you're working on a project together for my, for my central office folk, if you're going to draft the email text together, you can draft it inside a Google doc using this building block and, um, and it like will port everything over. The only thing it doesn't do is attachments. So like here, our, our meeting agenda is ready. I can't attach it here in docs, but when I click that Gmail, that Gmail button and it moves it over, I can attach it in there and then send it. And it, I don't have to type it back out. It's so slick. I don't have to copy and paste. It's it's really incredible. Um, this actually is one of my very favorite building blocks. So I've got this space here where I kind of demonstrated you've got the, the number two space is now you try it. Yeah, I do. So um, you'll, uh, so go ahead and, you know, type at email um, and and give it a try. So some things that are good to know, um, I, I put some, I put some space here. And so there's actually an extra space for you to write notes. If you want to like be like, oh, it doesn't put attachments. You can turn, certainly like put that in there if you want to add some notes. Um, but I just put that information about when you're done with your draft, you click that Gmail icon. So that is the, that's my very favorite one. I, I started with that one. Um, we started on a high note. So the next one here is um, the calendar event draft. This is very similar to the email one, except that it's a calendar event. So if I type at CAL, I could, I could write out calendar, but with the CAL, it knows what I want. Enter, there it goes. I can put in yeah the title, who the guests are, what time it starts, what time it ends, where it's located, and then that description box. Um, if you put hyperlinks in here, it keeps them. So like if you link in, you know, like if I have like an agenda and I make it a link, right? Um, 
you know, it'll keep that. And then when you're done, you click the calendar button and it moves over to calendar and you can save it and send it and send the invite to people. So it's super slick. Um, again, it's a great way to like collaborate on what you want that who should be invited. Um, it's calendar for Google calendar. Yes. Um, it works in Google calendar because this is Google docs. So there it's all Google tools that it's talking amongst, but yeah, it's, um, this one, I, I don't use quite as much, I think, cause I don't do a lot of like collaborative calendar work, but, um, this is a really, this is a really great feature for people who, you know, maybe you're working on like an invite to a training or you're working on, um, an invite to, um, an invite for like other teachers in your building to like meet, to talk about something, maybe a great little team. And you want to collaborate on what that invite looks like. This is a great way to do it. So go ahead and try it in that number two box. Go ahead and type that at CAL and, and insert the calendar event. Um, I've got a, oh, these are great questions. Somebody asked, how do you choose which calendar it adds to? It adds it to your calendar. So like all of us here with your SFUSD account, you have like your calendar, it's got your name. That's the calendar it puts it on. Um, but you can change like once it's in there. Uh, so actually I can, let me, I can click this. Let's do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show. Um, at, I'm gonna put Allison, you're invited. Start time um, is gonna be, Today at noon, great. That's a good time. End time today at where did you? One p.m. Okay. Um, and then when I click this calendar button, see it opens a new tab, and now it's here. And you can see that it put it on my calendar. This is my calendar, but I could choose a different one. So I could say, oh, I need to see, I need to be on the Teams calendar. Like that's something where I can change some of those things. But it brought all of my stuff over. You know, Allison is on there. It's got the time and the dates, all that stuff is there. But if I need to add a meet, I can do that here. Like all those things I can do once it's here, it's just moving over all of the, the details, if that makes sense. So thank you for asking that. All right. Um, I'm going to move on and go down to meeting notes. Oh, actually I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate some cleaning up here. I'm going to collapse these headings so that they are tucked out of the way. So I'm just going to collapse those collapse, collapse. Great. We're on to meeting notes. Um, so meeting notes is another, this one actually I do, I do use all the time. I love it. I, 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 I'm an, I don't want to be that person that says that about all these things, but I do use this one all the time, actually. Um, if you type at M-E-T, um, you can, again, you can type out all of meeting if you, if you want. I just find that the word meet is enough to have it suggest the one I want. And when I insert meeting notes, it's going to ask me to pick a meeting. Um, so like tomorrow, like there was a team huddle. Okay, so maybe I maybe I want meeting notes for that team. So it's asking me something on my calendar already. Um, so I'm gonna pick the team huddle, and then you'll see it filled in the date, the name, and it put all the attendees in. Anybody who was invited to that event, it gave me a space for notes and it gave me a space for action items. And the cool thing about action items is that it is a it's a, it's a you can check it off. So like I can say like do the thing right, and when it's done, it can get checked off. Um, someone asked, how do you insert a building block to start? You start with the with the at symbol. So I'm gonna delete this out of here so I can show that again. It's a great question. So if I type that that at symbol, the A with the circle around it, the at symbol, and then if I type M E E T. Um, oh, thank you, Meg, for asking. The this block, this box around it is just a one by one table. You don't have to do it inside of that box. You can actually do it out here. Um, I just wanted to give a like a contained space for it, um, but it can it doesn't have to be inside of a box at all. So, that, I think that was I'm glad you asked that. That could be confusing. Um, I just made a one by one table to hold it. Um, there are um, there's a side pop up when you do this in a document. It asks if you want to attach it to the calendar event. Um, it's you don't have to, um, but it's. It's easy to then to, if you've got the notes ready for the event and then it's attached, it's really great. Um, but this can be inserted into any document. So I use this actually on my running notes. I meet, well, I used to, I used to meet every week with the um, the Google admin for our district. And we just had like a long document with all of our stuff. And every week at the top, I would do at meet and insert a new set and put the stuff in. Um, so it doesn't have to be its own standalone document. It can go in any document. And if you don't have a meeting on the calendar yet, you cannot insert a note for it. You can't, there's no, you can't do meeting notes unless you have an event for it, um, which is the perhaps mildly annoying thing, but it makes, 
it kind of forces you to like make the meeting and the meeting's happening and then I can make the notes about it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate minimizing again. There we go, minimize. Um, oh, except that, uh, get rid of this. There we go. Okay. There are multiple project management um, building blocks. There are four of them. There is a product roadmap, a review tracker, project assets, and launch content tracker. Um, these are meant for like business type applications. They're, they're meant, you know, like if I, you know, the product roadmap, for example, if I do at product roadmap, um, you can see it's got project status, related files, and notes. Um, it's, it, you, know, you can see it's kind of like businessy focused, but this could also make a lot of sense to, if you guys change this to like assignment, and now it maybe makes, it makes more sense for students. So, you know, with, with some slight tweaking, these are, these can still be really useful. Um, and again, you just type letter the at, and then I can do like review tracker this time. Usually the first couple letters will get what you want. And so then it's like the reviewer and have they started reviewing it or not. So that could be like approval um, item, you know, or it can, it can be, you can certainly change those headings to be what you want. Yeah, Camille says she uses it for to-do lists. Nice. Um, there's a lot of somebody, I think project assets is one that um, my teammate uses project assets because it's just a file and then a description of what the, the thing is. So it's like a great way to like keep track of um, which things are related to a project. It's yeah, product roadmap could be useful for co-planning. Yes, 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 I love it. I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, these they're designed for business enterprise purposes, but they can still be really helpful with like either none or very small tweaks. All right, minimizing project management. Code block. This one maybe won't be as applicable to everyone, but you can insert code blocks. My, uh, my CS teacher should be excited about this. If I type at code, um, I can put in a code block. It wants to know which, uh, which, which language. And so then I can say Java, and then it'll let me write, you know, code in here, um, which is cool. And if I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't mean Java. Actually, I'm going to do it in Python. You know, you can, you can change. Um, this is great. Yeah. Like for computer science type stuff. Um, if you're working on, if you do anything with app script, uh, if you're like a really advanced user and you're like an app script, um, champion, you can do stuff in here to, uh, like collaborate on app script stuff. Um, but I think that it'll be most useful for computer science teachers. Students can use building blocks. So this goes really well. Um, we, you know, computer science teachers who are using Google Classroom, they can get, you know, a copy of a document and have a code block spot to put stuff in and it, it keeps the formatting and all that kind of stuff. So um, the, there is a, if I scroll over, there's a refresh arrow and what that does, it updates the colors. So like if I, um, some program languages have color coding to them and it can make the colors show up, which is cool. So I'm, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that one since I would guess that's a smaller segment of people who find that useful, but that is a thing that exists. So I'm gonna minimize that. All right, this one is the the newest the newest um, member of the family that uh, the newest thing to join this family is a custom building block. Um, this one is a little bit hard to try out because you have to create the thing first. So, like in the example of the to do list, if you make a table with your to do lists, you can actually save it as a like the empty table, the template itself. You can save as a custom building block to be able to insert wherever. Um, so what I did is I, but it doesn't, it doesn't just have to be like tables. It can be anything. So what I've got here, for example, is to type out your signature. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my signature. I'm Jessica Peterson. Um, my title is I am a learning design specialist, special, oops, special list. I always, you know, you, I can type really well when no one's watching, I swear. And then, you know, my department, I'm going to use CNI. And then my email address is Peterson J at sfusd.edu. Great, there's my signature. Um, so then I'm gonna go ahead and go down a couple lines. And then if I type at custom, oh, let me scroll down, custom. There it is, new custom building block. I'm gonna click on that. And it says, select the content you'd like to save as the building block. I'm gonna save this, that's what I want, save. Great, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it signature. Um, create. It's thinking about it. Cool. Um, and I'm going to say, got it. Okay. So now if I type at signature, it puts that same text in for me. 
boom. Anything you type over and over again, make it a custom building block. Any formatting, any table that you do all the time, make it a building block. Um, it's so slick. Jennifer, I, that was my next thing. Um, custom blocks cannot be shared, which is, I, th I think that's like a thing that's coming. I think that's what we're going to work on. But what you can do is if you create a document um, with, the, with the building block built into it, others can use that document. If they copy that document, now they've got a copy of that template with the with the custom building block. So it's that is the one thing that is that is not quite there yet. You can't quite share them, but um, it's pretty great. You can insert the signature one. I can now insert into any Google Doc I have access to. It's really great for anything you type over and over again uh, or anything like, you know, like tables that you make all the time that you know, if you're making the same table every single time, make a custom building block. Um, and then I've got a resource here to learn more about custom building blocks. So that Jessica, is the, yes, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask you to just slow your pace a tiny okay. bit because I know we have interpreters working and we're also looking at visual documents. Okay. So I want to make certain that anyone who needs to view two different things at one time to absorb all the information gets a little extra time. Okay. I can do that. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize um, that custom building block thing. All right. We are on to variables. Uh, remember that variables were very vaguely defined as data connectors. And I said that would make more sense as we went along. Uh, this is the chance for it to make sense. So I'm going to start with the date one. I'm going to expand it. You can insert different dates um, without having to know what the date is, which is cool. So I can type at, oops, at today. And if I don't know what today's date is, it's going to put in today's date. It's pretty great. Uh, so like maybe, you know, I know we're meeting, I know we're meeting tomorrow, but I can't remember what the date, what date tomorrow is. We got to spell it right though. Inserts tomorrow's date. So it's pretty sweet. Um, you can also insert a custom date. So I can say like January 1st, Jan, that's suggesting January. Oh, Jan 1. That's what I want. Um, and see there, it puts it in. This is, this is nice because it is, you know, I can add a time to it. There's, it's, it's a, it's like a piece of data. It's a, it's a data connector. That's that's my best thing. But you can also choose a relative date. So I can say like, we're meeting next Tuesday, um, Tuesday. And it tells me that that next Tuesday is August 15th or it's, you know, even past that it's August 22nd. So it's really nice because you it, it knows what the dates are, even if you don't. And so it's really helpful to, um, to be able to like insert those dates. So it's connecting like calendar dates data with your document. Something that is good to know is that the date chips um, appear the same to collaborators in all time zones. So if you're working with a partner that is, um, you know, in like New York or something, if you put a time in here, so if I say yeah, at a time, noon, great, it will also show as noon for that person. They will have to know that it's, um, it's, a, it's in the Pacific time zone. Uh, Jennifer asked, does it recognize holidays? That's a great question. Let's see, at Groundhog's Day. Mm, it doesn't seem to recognize holidays. No such luck. Um, but I could certainly, if I know, I mean, if you know the date of the holiday, it's probably not useful anyway. Excuse me. But no, it does not seem to recognize holidays. So it's very cool. It's very, very cool. I'm going to minimize that. Oh, um, Jennifer, it stays the same date. So Jennifer asked if I type at today, today, and then I look at the document again, tomorrow, does it have tomorrow's date now? No, it keeps today's date, uh, which, which can be nice because you can, you know, know that it's like recorded the exact date, but, um, it won't update. No Google sheets will update though. Fun fact. <laughs> so, uh, people is my next variable and People, it's just um, inserting a person's name. So you can actually see when I, the very first thing when I did the at symbol, it puts in, it suggests myself. I don't know, um, and it also suggests Allison, but I can type anyone in. So I can do like Christina. And there's a, a chip for Christina. There is a little pop up here. I'm going to scroll over so you can see it. And it tells me that mentioned people are not notified, but you can give them access to this document. Um, so like it says, like this document right now, currently I didn't share with anybody. It's just my copy. So I mentioned Christina, but Christina cannot see this document because it's just mine. 
I can share it with her really easy with this button, but um, I don't, I don't have to, I can, you know, this can be a note for myself that um, Christina is going to work on something. Maybe I'm going to dismiss it. Um, but when I hover over the box, you can see that it tells me lots of stuff about Christina. This is connecting data from the directory with my documents. So I can see that Christina, I can see her email address. I can see that she is a, a TOSA, um, a teacher on special assignment on the digital learning team. Um, I can see, I don't know if the work phone numbers are up to date anymore. I don't know. I don't know if anybody here has telephones anymore, but I can see all sorts of stuff about her. And then there's also buttons to send an email. There's a button to, I can like chat her a message. Um, I can schedule an event with her, lots of cool stuff. So um, it's nice to, this is, and this pulls from the directory um, that SFUSD maintains. You can also type at me for a chip for yourself. So when I typed at me, it suggested myself. Um, that's me. Yep. Okay, I'm going to minimize that and then we're going to move on to file. File is the one that I see people using the most without realizing that it's a smart chip. Um, and so if I type um, at and then followed by the name of a document. So um, I've got a, a lot of files. So I've got, um, this is my deck that I was using earlier that we have not looked at since. Um, so I just typed in like the name, part of the name of that file. You can see there's Google in the name of that file. And so then, so I typed at Google and then I'm just gonna click on that file that I want. And you'll see now it's like a little, a little, a little chip. And if I hover over it, it shows me a preview of the, of the file of the, of, in this case, the deck. Um, I can also really easily copy this, these two stacks of papers icon. That's um, to copy the link if I wanted to paste the URL somewhere else. So that's uh, that's how that chip works. Only files in Google Drive and YouTube videos can be inserted as smart chips. You can't insert a website, so I can't insert like cnn.com as a website. Um, when you if you print a document that has a file like this, the bubble around it does show up. That's just kind of good to know. Um, and then the in this case, when I th because this current document is only shared with me. Um, in this case, nothing is, is there's not giving me any warning, but if like somebody else had access to this document, like the, this handout that I'm working on and they didn't have access to the, this file, that's the chip, it would say, oh, this other person doesn't have access. Do you want to have access? There's like lots of like checks to like help make sure that everybody has access that they need to have. So that's the file one. I'm gonna minimize that and we're gonna move on to task. Um, there was a question earlier about tasks that you can assign an action item. So if you remember back when we were talking about the meeting agendas, there was the action items with the checklist and you could add it as a task. Tasks is a Google tool that you can use to organize your to-do list items. I personally do not use tasks. My colleague Xander does use tasks. It's just, you know, different brains work for different people. I personally, I don't like tasks um, because they... I feel like I can't keep track. I don't know, actually. I don't really know why I don't like them. I just, it doesn't work for me. And that's okay. That's it. That's it. It doesn't work for me. Um, somebody in the chat. Because you're too asked, organized. That's why. <laughs> that is, if you hang out with me for long enough, that's not true. It's a facade. Uh, Jennifer asked earlier in the chat if there's a better way to see and manage your Google tasks rather than over on the side of Gmail. And not really. Um, it is also on the side here of docs. So actually just right here, there's the tasks thing. And I see, I have no tasks in here. Um, this little like circle with a check mark in it is tasks. So you can see your tasks in other places, but there's really not like a great way to manage them. Um, I don't think tasks.google.com is a, a website. So that's, yeah, that's not a place you can go. So it really is just like the sidebars is the only place you can manage tasks. Um, but like I said, for some people that works really well, they really like it and that's awesome. Um, you can insert, if you're a person that uses tasks or if you work with someone who's a person who uses tasks, you can um, do the at symbol and type task. Um, and I can give it a title. So I can say like important action item. Um, I can assign it to someone. I know Xander uses tasks, I'm gonna assign it to Xander. And then I can set a due date. So I can say, this is due on Friday. And I can assign as a task. Um, it popped up a little thing here that says, Xander doesn't have access to this file, but you've assigned him a task in it. I can share it with Xander or I can not, it's up to you. Um, but Xander will get an email in this case that says this task has been assigned to him. That's just good to know. I've got um, some resources here and some other things to know about tasks. 
um it's a it's it's a little it's a little wonky i think they're still improving how tasks work with docs um but there's just some good things to note on here if you if you are a tasks person or if you work with a tasks person i recommend reading these these additional notes down here all right i'm going to minimize task and we're going to go on to drop downs drop downs i feel like is the real game changer within variables um and so a drop you might have seen drop downs in google sheets they now also exist in Google Docs, which is pretty great. So if I type at drop, D-R-O-P, you'll see it suggests drop down. And then um, it's it, there's some, some ones that already exist. Um, we've got review status, we've got project status. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. So like review status has not started, in progress, under review and approved. Project status has not started, blocked, in progress and completed, those exist already. I can create a new one. So new drop down, and I'm going to give it a name. What should I call it? Um, maybe like assign assignee person that's assigned to. Uh, and so I'm going to say Allison is a person that could be assigned to. Awesome. Christina is a person that could be assigned to. I got to spell though. Uh, Xander is another one. And I'm going to put myself because I could be assigned a task as well. I can make colors. So I can say Allison is going to be red. Christina is going to be blue. Xander's purple. And I'm green. Um, I can also delete. So if I'm like, oh, shoot, actually, Allison's not even part of this group. I'm going to delete her off of there. You get the trash can. We'll get rid of it. If I need another option, um, I can put, you know, Steve can be in here. And I'm going to make Steve orange. Great. And I'll say save. Great. So now you see it defaulted to the top option on my on my drop down and if i click on it i've got you know xander jessica steve to choose from in that drop down and i can also there's another space here where i can edit and add more um, more people or i can change the colors because it doesn't have an option that says like no one yet right like you know if i'm working on something and i haven't assigned anyone to it yet there's not an option here for that i would want to add that so that would be an option is like um no one or no one yet, maybe no one yet is a good one. I'll say save. And then now I can have it have no one yet. So it can only have the ver the values that you put in. Um, but you can copy and paste the entire chip. So like this whole chip, um, I can select it and copy it and then paste it. Oh, not like that. Oops. Where are we? I can just paste this chip over and over again. Um, instead of having to like recreate it or reinsert it. So it, it works with like a copy paste type thing too. Um, and then if I realize, you know, I've got all these copies of this chip and I realize, oh, actually Christina isn't part of this project anymore. If I edit it and I say, you know, Allison's back on the project and I say save, it asks, do you want to update all of the other dropdowns that use these same values? Because it knows like you've copied and pasted this many times if you changed it here, you don't want to change it every single time. So you actually can apply to all. And now they all will have Allison instead of Christina. So that's pretty slick. Jessica is, could you look at Elise's question? I believe the answer is probably everyone who's an editor, but yes, could you Elise, that? it is everyone. Anyone who can edit the file can use the, these features, these smart chips. Um, viewers, can't, they can see them like you know a viewer could see that Allison is chosen here in this drop down, but um, they can't change the drop down. But any editor can change the drop down, can insert new drop downs, all of that kind of stuff. It's a great question. Thanks for asking. All right, I'm going to minimize drop downs. We have ten minutes. Okay, we can, we can, we can do this. Um, but the good news is that part of that uh, norm, um, take what you can today and come back for more later. You can absolutely come back to this handout later. Just your handout. The custom variable is the next one. So I just um, opened up custom variable and you can create custom variable chips. So what this is really cool for is if you are, if you have like a, like a template and you, oh, sorry, let me back up. Maybe I have like a letter that goes home that says your student is the student of the week. It's very exciting. And I want to make sure that at the top of that, you know, um, in that space that I say, you know, like, you know, dear student name. And then I want to say like, or maybe I say like dear family of student name. And then later on in the document, I'll say like student name has been chosen. You know, it, it's, I keep using that same variable over and over again. 
if it's a custom variable, I can edit it in one place and it updates in all the other places in the document. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. There's a lot of information here um, on how to do it and how to talk about it. I've got some instructions for like how to start. So um, like I said, type at VAR and it's suggests variable. Um, similar to a mail merge, but I'm not creating multiple copies of it. So um, Andre said in the chat that it sounds like a mail merge, not quite. It's a little bit different, but I'm going to do stew name here, create, um, and then I can give it values. So, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm going to close that. Um, so all the steps are here. Uh, basically, in a document, you know, if I write this, this, you know, like a form letter, or if I write the thing up, or maybe it's like a, maybe it's a, um, a like an action, like a learning action plan um, that I have like ready, and then when when I am working with a student, I need it, then I can you know, filled out for that student kind of thing. Basically, it allows me to create a variable I can swap out with different values without having to like copy and paste and make a new one. Um, but it is just that one, the file you have has the variable. I'm not explaining this very well, I can tell. <laughs> it's not creating multiple copies of the file. When I change the variable name, it's still the same document. It's still the same version of it. Um, it just, the variable name is different. So it's kind of like, and then I can print that out. And then next time I can swap the name out again and I can print it out. Like it's, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it, it's, it can work like a mail merge. I actually, I have not used this a lot. I'm going to be honest. I've not used it a lot. I've used it a little. I've played with it a little. I don't have any real use for it in my current, in all my old job, in my DOT job, maybe in my library's job, I'll have um, uses for it. Um, so I would love if you use this and you find fair, like a really good use for it. If you would email me, I would love to hear how, how you figure out how to make this work. Um, it's, it's great for templates. Um, and so, but it's, it's, it's not making any copies of the thing. It's like, you can like make the template and swap in the thing and print it out. And then the next time you use the template, swap it in and print it out, but it's not doing, um, yes. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for, for saying that. Uh, Jennifer says in the chat, this would be good for a cover letter where you might need to change the date to the current date each time you print. Yes, that's a great example. Thank you. Thank you for throwing me a lifeline there. Um, so it's a, oh, an, another Jennifer wants to know if you can embed it in one of your email draft smart chips. That's a great question. I actually don't know. I would love to, I would love it if you would find out and let me know. I'm going to, I'm going to do a good old teacher move and challenge you to find that answer um, and let us know. Okay. So that's custom variable. Uh, like I said, all the stuff and information is here in your copy and you can certainly play around with it. There's lots of stuff that's good to know. And there is a resource down here on how to do it step-by-step. Step. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize custom variable. And we are, we've got seven minutes left. We're going to do, these will be fast. This will be great. Um, the last category of smart chips are quick insert items. And these are items from the insert menu. So I'm going to expand that. There are this giant bulleted list are all the things you can insert using a smart chip without having to click on the insert menu. So um, for example, table is one I use a lot. So I can say at T-A-B and it says, you want a table? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I do. And it wants to know how big. So I can say like, okay, I want, you know, this big of a table, right? But I don't have to go up to the insert menu and do all the clicking. So I, table is one I use all the time. Um, another one, um, is uh, page break. I do page break a lot at page break. Where is it? Mm, oh, maybe it's just break. Refresh my brain. I can be looked by Google Docs. Break. Mm, suggesting emojis. How did I do page break? Well, maybe I can't because I'm inside a table. It wouldn't let me page break inside a table. That's probably why it's smarter than me. It knows I can't do that inside of a table. Um, but you can do an image. So I can say at image and I can insert an image and it asks me which source, like it's all right here instead of going up to the insert menu. So this can be like a huge time saver if you get really good at this. If you like remember which, which things are in here, which is, as you can see, most things, most things are in here. Emojis, checklists, charts, um, horizontal line, special characters you can insert from here, watermarks, tables, pretty much anything you can insert period, you can do it with the at symbol. It's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. Um, and then bookmarks is another thing that you can insert. And so I, I separate that out because I think a lot of people use bookmarks 
when they're formatting documents, especially like central office people who use a lot of bookmarks. So um, if you type at book, it'll insert a bookmark. What a bookmark is, it's a link specifically to that spot of your doc. So like in this case, this document has now gotten very long, right? Um, and so this bookmark is a, I can link directly to this particular place. That's what a bookmark is. Um, so it used to be, you had to go up and insert bookmark and it was like a whole thing. And now it's, you can type at book and it's, it's really sweet. Oh, and here's some information about bookmarks. If you're curious about how bookmarks work. So I want to minimize bookmarks and we are on to timer. Okay. Timer is good. Um, if you type at timer, you can put a timer in here. So I can say that I want it to be, um, you know, two minutes long, right? Two minutes. Okay. And I can say start and it's counting down. That timer is counting down. Um, the one thing that's good to know is there's no noise that tells you the timer is up. So like, you have to kind of like have it nearby to watch it, um, but it's a built-in timer. You don't have to go anywhere else for you have to insert anything strange. Anyone with edit access can start or pause or reset the timer. Um, and viewers and commenters can see the timer in action after it's been started by an editor. So there's the timer is just like going, I can pause it. So I'm gonna click the pause button, oh, hover, pause. I can reset it back to two minutes. I can change the value. I can say, actually, I want it to be one minute long. Um, great for meeting agendas. Excellent, Allison. Yeah, you can put it in next to your meeting agenda. And so here's, yeah, here's this timer and we get to this section. I'm starting the timer and we have this long to talk about the thing. It's pretty great. Um, so that's timer, at timer. Stopwatch is related. So I'm in the stopwatch section now. If I type at stop, it suggests stopwatch. Um, and it's the same idea. If I, you know, if I click on it, it starts counting. Um, and it, it displays seconds here. Like you can see it's going up slower than if I hover over it, we've actually got like milliseconds um, and I can pause it, I can reset it. Um, that can be like a neat activity actually for students. If students are working in a Google doc and they wanna like time themselves how fast they can do something, you can they can actually insert the stopwatch and see how fast they can go. Um, and then again, same thing as the timer. Anyone with edit access can start, pause or reset the stopwatch. Any viewers or commenters can see the stopwatch in action after it's been started by an editor. So, but yeah, that's stopwatch. So I'm going to minimize stopwatch and we are on to voting chips. Voting chips are fairly new and very cool. Um, so I'm going to do at VOT and this is a voting chip. So I'm going to put in the thumbs up. That's good. So actually, let me go above here. And I'm going to say, should we reschedule this meeting? Schedule this meeting, right? And I can have people vote. And so I can say um, my voting chip and I'm gonna do, this time I want like a thumbs down. I wanna find a thumbs down. There's the thumbs down. Okay, great. Um, and then I can say, you know, at voting chip and I can say, um, you know, maybe like middle. No, that's not the middle I want. <laughs> Medium, let's see. Uh, what would be a, an emoji that would say like, you know, I don't, I don't care. Is there like a, Maybe I want like a shrug. Yeah, a shrug. There we go. Like I don't care. And then people can come in once I, you know, once I've got the setup. Anybody who's got an editor, anybody who is an editor, can come in and say like, "Yep, I vote for rescheduling." Uh, actually, you know, change my vote. I want to say actually, I don't care. So you can click things. They they can they can you know they can vote essentially for one. Um, that you can you can see I can vote for all three. That's just good to know. That there's nothing to stop someone from voting for more than one, but um, you know, they can only vote one time for each thing. So I can't vote like 10 times for the thumbs up. Um, and they have to be an editor. Yes, Margo. Um, they cannot be, um, they, people with viewing and commenting access can see what the votes are, but they can't vote themselves. So it has to be an editor. All right, last one. We, oh, we are a minute out. Um, emoji is pretty straightforward. We saw it a little bit before. And so if I just do, at emo, I can insert emojis really easy. Um, you can also type things like at happy and it will suggest if I scroll down, scroll down all the way down, it suggests some happy related emojis. So There's slightly happy. Um, that is the handout. We are right on time. Um, I hope, uh, actually there's a quick question I'm gonna answer. Elise asked, can I put the voting task in an email or is it just in a Google Doc? It's just in a Google Doc. All of these features are just inside of Google Docs. Um, well, actually that's not entirely true. Most of these features are just inside Google Docs. Some of the variables work in Google Sheets as well. Um, the timer can be set for any value. Um, it's noon, it's lunchtime. 
uh, if you want to stick around and ask some questions, I'm happy to stay. If you um, are ready to go out, thank you so much for coming. It was a delight to see you all. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Feel free to share this uh, handout with others. Um, and have a great have a great school year. It's going to be a great school year. Uh, thank you so much, Jessica. I have a quick question. I don't really understand the concept of a code block. Mm. Um, yeah, so a code block is for writing like computer code. Oh, um, yeah, which means it's it most it's it's only a small segment of people that would find that useful, I think. Ignoring. OK. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I missed that. Sorry. Right. Any other questions people have that I didn't get to? And also, please use that feedback form that I've added into oh, yeah. the chat. Um, you can select this session. And if you have specific comments that you want to relate to Jessica, that's a great place to add them. Thank you, Allison. Keep me on top of things as always. I'm not really organized. I just have you. <laughs>